Lamas, you already know. Babylon always trying to ting. Trying to ting on Canaan Land Mars. So we continue on. Um, so this is the letter to Emil Hill. I'll just start from the top again. My dear brother, I am agreeably surprised as well as glad to hear from you at this time. I have often wondered what had happened to you. Now speaking of Dove L, you didn't give much understanding as to what this party was doing or where he was operating or who gave him his authority if he acts in lines of Islam. So find out what this brother is teaching, his right to do so, and who did he receive it from. Now the whole trouble is this. When I was on my way around to visit the Prophet's temple in August 1929, Kirtman Bay was made Supreme Grand Advisor by a group of Moors secretly, and it was kept secret, unbeknown to me what was on, till we were ready to transact our regular business in the convention, then they sprang this trick of making Kirkman head of the organization, which is in direct violation of the Prophet's laws and the Holy Quran, according to chapter 10, verse 22. We, as heads of the Prophet's temples, fell asleep at that point by being confused over the passing of our Prophet, which they knew you would not be expecting any surprise, and, and that so they thought was the time for them to put him over. But I had stated in the outset, in advance of any official work, that in view of the passing of the Prophet and the much confusion that was very rampant at the time, we wouldn't be able to do anything effective except choose a grand treasurer and a board of trustees, which the Prophet said himself we should have. Anything else I declared would be unofficial till the next regular meeting of Supreme Grand Council. He, Kirtman Bay, made his advisor anyway, was made advisor anyway, but I knew I had been given the power by the Prophet in the first article of the Constitution to change anything that went wrong by the Holy Quran and Constitution, which we did in the last convention. But we also, but he doesn't think so, and decided against him. Yet he is still acting against the will of the Holy Prophet Juali. But can you expect, but can you expect, he thinks he has, he has perfect right to do what he is doing, because so many of the governors and grand sheiks fell after the passing of the Prophet and most of them are with him now and against the Prophet. They are fighting me because I won't stand for Kirkman Bay to act as Supreme Grand Advisor of the organization. They are doing all they can against me on this account virtually destroying if possible the movement through willful, willful malicious disobedience. Now some now some of the who are with him as against the Prophet, and I say against the Prophet because when you fail to recognize the man the Prophet appointed and give him your cooperation and support, you have virtually turned down the Prophet for someone else. And those, and those I know of according to their way and actions and works, Brother T. W. Osley, Milwaukee, Brother F. Nelson Bay, Detroit, Brother C. Charles Bay, Cleveland, Sister M. Cliff Bay, Indianapolis, Sister Doug L. Chicago. These don't write me when I write them, because I won't accept Kirtman Bay as in the place of Juali, and I never do. Well, the time is proving all true according to the divine plans. He said, children, there won't be but a few saved, because you are not going to do what I tell you. You want your way you want and your way you are going to have but if your way leads downward children so you better do like I tell you if you do like I tell you there is a chance for you if not there is nothing for you but death they govern their actions by majority which is all right if the majority is right on the other hand if only the one is right that one is the majority. That's Islam. But they won't run the Moral Science Temple of America according to the principles of Christianity or politics. And that, and that is, young may never be so wrong, but if the majority is with you, you are right anyway. 
but so in Islam nothing but right will do well that is why they fight me simply because I won't accept Kirtland Bay as head of the organization if I would do that I would be alright with them if I would do that I would be alright with them but Drew Ali said to me on his sick bed before he passed you do what I tell you never mind what they say I have given you the law Quran Constitution and I expect you to enforce my law and do what I say never mind what they say or do they can do nothing but die so you have the law is laid down by him Drew Ali and you will be required to answer for yourself in that day and to choose now who you will follow whether it be Kirkman Day or Nobu Drew Ali the divine prophet of our God Allah and I'm going to expect you at the next convention that you may forego things amiss because to follow anyone now except Drew Ali you have no part with him I hope I have made myself and the cause clear to you and if not write for further information peace Emily Hill Supreme Grand Chief now this is another letter now because it's funny how you know you don't hear that there's letters from all these other Moorish factions that claim to be reincarnated etc there's never letters from them you know saying that Neil Yule isn't the, the authority right and that's directly because of what Emil is saying in the letter same thing that Nobu Jwali is saying in the readings to be read every meeting right and it's not it's not as it's not as cut and dry right as you see it from the outside so you know that that was just like two pages you know what I mean like this is the book right here right so there's like tons of information in this about the Moorish movement that people have no idea what went down no idea like clueless as to what went down in the Moorish movement right and this is why we put information that we have out the way we put it out right because we want people to even even unconscious Moors that might be watching this or might bump into this and see this called the Mukul Green Files right you know and the only place you're going to get this is in the Moorish Science Temple this is the only place you're going to get this this is not something you're going to find in a bookstore this is not something you're going to find you know somebody selling on the corner right this was deliberately held back so people don't know about all those letters that the Supreme Grand Sheik after the Prophet Neely Eel wrote as the successor you know just like he said article 1 the power to make law and enforce law right and he called them on it and nobody said anything everybody just continued doing what they were doing and pretended like Neely Eel you know was nobody and how do you know even without even without any um paperwork or list from Nobu Drali showing who the successor is you know how you know that no, that that he knew he was the successor because he never ever once even though Nobu Drali gave him the authority he never once claimed to have the authority he always gave the authority to Nobu Drali he always made it clear that there's one prophet in this movement and that one prophet is Nobu Juali. And if you are with the prophet, then follow what he said. Study what he told you to study. What did he tell you to study? He said, study your questionnaire, study your Holy Quran, 
study of the Latin Constitution. Just in those three articles of literature alone will you be able to redeem yourself without having any heads to try to control you. Right? But, remember that even if you bootleg the one-on-one questionnaire, Holy Quran, Divine Constitution, and you study those and you become adept in those, you're not a member of the Moral Science Temple. So that information is useless to you. And you're really useless to the movement, having that information, but not adhering to being a member of the Moral Science Temple of America. Because only as a member are you going to be able to have the power to make a claim. Only as a member, you know, membership has its privileges. So being a member, you would be able to request these things. Like you can't be Negro, Black, Colored and go into the Moral Science Temple and ask for this. You're not going to get it. Right? And it would be wrong for them to give it to you because you're going to get this and not even know what is going on. This is, this is a book for morals. This is a book for conscious morals. Morals who know about their truth, the who know about the truth, about their nationality and birthrights. It is a, extremely important. And, you know, Islam to the morals in Mecca, right, with National Grand Sheikh Dawid Ali Il, that put this book in my hand, right, for no cost, emolument, you know what I mean, no props or nothing like that. Like, I'm giving him his props because I respect the brother. But what, what he did by giving us this book was clearing up all our concepts about the Moorish movement, about who said that there, this, who said that there, that, and really what, what is, you know, what's supposed to be taught and what's supposed to be demonstrated if you have a turban and fez and you say that you're more right um now this is just um the research libraries of new york public library online catalog of the new york public library record one of four microfilm FBI file on Moral Science Temple of America, Nobu Juali. Three microfilm rules. Records dated 1931 to 1959. Juali, Moral Science Temple of America, United States Federal Bureau of Invest Investigations, Muslims, United States Societies, etc. Muslims, Black History Sources, African Americans. Then there is another record, record 204, Guide to the Microfilm Edition of the FBI File on Morris Science Temple of America, Noble Drawley, Eight Leaves, uh, pretty much the same thing, right? So now, they're saying that they have FBI files going from 1931 to 1959, right? So they've been infiltrating for that long and they had to have been infiltrating before that right in order to get that close to Nobu Juali right to have agents that close to Nobu Juali because remember it's by it's by the actions it's by what they do right and even Il pointed out what they were doing what was wrong Right? And in him, in him pointing out what they're wrong, what they're doing wrong, means that they're violating. Especially if they're not sending out anything saying, no, you're wrong, you can't say that, we didn't do that. Right? There's nothing from the Kirtland Bay faction of the movement that I've seen personally, right, that challenges the claim that you need to eliminate. Right? They haven't come out and said anything. So, it must be, you know, 
it must be real right again going back to the whole thing about about the sellout now this is this is 1982 right this is 1982 right the circuit court of Cook County Illinois more science temple of America a not-for-profit corporation by our love L president plaintiff versus brother Densmore Bay brother Jesse Johnson L brother Shania L brother Fishburn Bay sister C Price Bay and more science temple of America by sister E Liggins L agent for defendants the defendants the defendants Desmore B, Jesse Johnson L, Brother Shanna L, Brother Fishman Bay, Sister Price Bay, Sister Liggins L, were never duly and legally elected as officers or directors of Plaintiff's Corporation and have been attempting to function without due authority to do so under the Plaintiff's name. That's that such usurpation and improper use of plaintiff's name occurred on June 15, 1977 when defendants fraudulently and improperly filed for and obtained a charter from the Secretary of State of Illinois and this in 1977 why sacrilegiously using the name of Noble Juali and the original founder of plaintiff's organization who died in 1929 that many of the said defendants are former members of the plaintiff with full knowledge of its status and its activities on November 29 1926 Marshall Holy Temple of Science a nonprofit corporation was granted a corporate charter by the state of Illinois to operate as a perpetual corporate entity and changed in 1928 to Morris Science Temple of America religious corporation since its inception, the Mars Science Temple of America, Inc. has filed annually reports with Secretary of State by and through its duly authorized... Now, when you go through the other drivers literature, you need to tell you straight that, you know, Mars shouldn't be taking Mars into the European courts. Right? And then you have Mars taking Mars to court. Right? With the names and everything in there. So you know who the violators are. It's not even... It's not even secret, you know, there's nothing blacked out in, in these ones, right? This is putting it all out there, um, right? Again, Morris Science Temple of America, a corporation versus John Gibbons Ill and Jesse Shelba Ill, right? Like, it's crazy when you go through, when you go through all this and you see how how serious the Moorish movement was back then and the attention that the Moorish movement was getting but we don't hear anything about the Moorish movement we hear about NOI, we hear about Pan-African, NAACP all the 12 infiltrated organizations in King Alfred Plan but when it comes to the Moorish movement you don't hear anything that should tell you something there's a reason why you haven't heard about Nobu Juali ever in your life and you were part of organizations or you studied people who were members of the Morris Science Temple of America and disbanded and decided to start their own movement after Nobu Juali passed and some of them who were with Nobu Juali didn't even correct their position like Marcus Garvey still, still trying to improve the Negro universally right which is something that can't be done and never would be done right even though you can go online you can google noble Juali postcard to his wife from atlanta prison when he went to visit marcus garvey right he went to visit marcus garvey right if he went to visit them, he had to have nationalized them. You're not gonna go, the prophet's not gonna visit a straw man, Negro black colored, and not 
give him the hand grip and pull him out of his grave. Right? So Marcus Garvey had to be nationalized. If Elijah Poole Bay was nationalized, then Marcus Garvey was nationalized. If David Ford L was nationalized, then Marcus Garvey was nationalized. If Muhammad Ali was nationalized, then Marcus Garvey was nationalized. Right? But there's no there's no literature of that. Right? But there are, you know, there's things like there's things like this picture, right? There's pictures like this one, right? That we wonder, you know, well, the, yeah, there's Marcus Garvey in this picture, and then there's a man sitting next to Marcus Garvey, right, in street clothes. And nobody doesn't know who this, who this individual is, right? This is around the time of the convention. This is around the time of Marcus Garvey making a statement to the world about where and how his movement was progressing. And his next move, this is why he stopped Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey's next move was to tell all the Garveyites to go join the Morris Science Temple of America. Right? And that's evident, that's evident when you go research Deuce Muhammad Ali, right? And you find out about the strife between Deuce Muhammad Ali and Marcus Garvey because of the infiltrator that came in and tried to put Deuce Muhammad Ali as he's trying to take over the UNIA when Marcus Garvey gets arrested. Right? This is how deep the infiltration goes. Go research the infiltrator. It's one individual that everybody knows who he is and he looks like a European but he's a brother. And he infiltrated the UNIA and got, he, he, it's just like, it's just like, like, cause I want to put this on the record too, right? Islam to brother Hannibal Bay for putting out the information to tie all these these scattered organizations together that everybody thinks are separate entities when all of them have the same foundation, Noble Juali. All of them have the same foundation. All of them are dealing with correcting your status, correcting your slave position and getting yourself into a higher level, right? So when, when we have the, when we have the UNIA, right, being infiltrated, and the individual that's infiltrating is not saying that some Negro, black, colored, you know, improved nigger is taking over the organization, He's trying to say that the more, the, the, the more, Deuce Muhammad Ali is the one that's trying to undermine Marcus Garvey. And then Marcus Garvey went for it. This is where all of his so-called stress and whatever comes from. It didn't come from the case. It had nothing to do with the case that he was going through. The case was medial. It was $3 mail fraud. $3 mail fraud. That's nothing to stress yourself about. Right? So, for them to talk about they're going to get him out of here and deport him and do all these things is because he was taking the steps. No different than El Haj was taking the steps. Right? No different than Martin Luther King was taking the steps. Told you in the I Have a Dream speech. Broke everything down to you as far as your position and what you're supposed to do. And then finally he said, I seen the mountaintop. Why do you see the mountaintop? Because the mountaintop is cold. For I'm a mason. And I've been privy to the information about the Moorish history or, quote-unquote, the Great Seal. 
right? What what Freemasons call Muhammad's Mountain? You can research that. The Great Seal is called Muhammad's Mountain, and Martin Luther King said he's seen the mountain top. He's talking in code, but only Moors pick up the code. That's why Noble Drew Ali said you're not Negro, Black, colored, so you can think like a Moor. And once you start thinking like a Moor, things are going to be very clear to you. It's not even going to be, it's not even going to be a hard find. You know what I mean? Noble Drew Ali is not a hard sell. Right? All we're saying is be members of the Moor Science Temple of America. Nobody's saying don't be Rastafarian. Nobody's saying don't be Garviek. Don't be Pan-African. Don't be, right? We're saying correct your status. And then once you correct your status, then you can rep whatever you want to rep. Because your status is going to be correct. Even if you say you're the black, whatever. If your name is L or B or LB or D or Al right you're still a more if you say that you are from Africa right what is it that Noble Juali laid out and this is why we say it's about studying what Noble Juali brought you because what Noble Juali brought you was your salvation and he laid it all out so you can even explain it to somebody else so all you Negro, black, colored people that come from Africa and you were brought to America and think that you have to go back to Africa. Listen to what Noble Drawley said to you, right? Because he said it to you. He came from Negro, black, colored people, right? Remember what we read in the beginning, right? In the book, from black Muslim to Muslim, right? Because we're Everybody knows that the black label, African label, Negro label, color label is dead. No need to use it. Right? People even pointed it out to you. Right? How many people out there heard of the book? From black Muslims to Muslim. How many people out there have the book? Why is the book not something that is a study tool amongst quote unquote black Muslims? Because it's telling you right there, in the book, nationality is the order of the day. It shows a picture of nationality card and everything in there. So you know what, what it is that you're getting involved in. Right? And that it's not a fraud. It's legit. Don't care what somebody says. You're Moors. It's documented in everybody's historical records that you are Moors. Right? Noble Drew Ali said that the Moabites from the land of Moab who receive permission from the pharaohs of Egypt which is in Africa to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa they were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire so these people who receive permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa so the people on that side of the continent, on that side of the Atlantic, sorry, that were enslaved, so-called enslaved, those people from Northwest Africa, because that's where they say that they all those people came from, right? That's where all the slave forts are. The people of Northwest Africa are the founders and true possessors of the Moroccan Empire. So your jurisdiction is not only on the continent of Africa. Your jurisdiction is also here. Because this is the Moroccan Empire. North, South, Central America and Atlantis Islands that they call the Caribbean is the Moroccan Empire. Not only is that the Moroccan Empire, their dominion and inhabitation extended from northeast and southwest Africa. So not only northwest Africa, but also northeast and southwest. 
Africa, across the great Atlantis, even unto the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and Atlantis Islands. So Mabel Jewali is telling Negro, black, colored people who during the same time that Mabel Jewali was doing his ministry, right? There was people that were slaves, getting lynched and all that. Right? It was happening. He told those people that you are the true possessors of the Moroccan Empire and your inhabitation extends from the continent. Your jurisdiction, Africans, African brothers and sisters that don't want to call themselves Moors, slave, Negro, black, colored people that don't want to call themselves Moors, right? Your inhabitation before you went into slavery went from Africa across the Atlantic Ocean onto the present North, South, Central America and the adjoining islands that we call the Caribbean. That is the jurisdiction that the slaves have. So why is it that these slaves don't take possession of their empire and stop lying to their self that they only came from over there when their inhabitation were their inhabitation Let's see if there's a law term for inhabitation. All right. All right. So there's inhabitant. Right? Inhabitant. So there isn't inhabitation, but there's inhabitant. This is um, Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Inhabitant. The word, or inhabitant, one who resides actually and permanently in a given place and has his domicile there. The words inhabitant, citizen, and resident as employed in different constitutions to define the qualifications of electors mean substantially the same thing. Inhabitant, citizen, and resident as employed in different constitutions to define the qualification of electors means substantially the same thing. And one is an inhabitant, resident, or citizen at the place where he has his domicile or home. But the terms resident and inhabitant have also been held not synonymous. The latter implying a more fixed and permanent abode than the former and importing privileges and duties to which a mere resident would not be subject. So again, their dominion and inhabitation or citizenship extended from northeast and southwest Africa across the great Atlantis even unto the present north south and central America and also Mexico and the Atlantis islands before the great earthquake that caused the Atlantic Ocean according to all true and divine records of the human race there is no Negro black or colored race attached to the human family because all the inhabitants or citizens of Africa were and are of the human race descendants of the ancient Canaanite nation citizens and nation 
from the holy land of Canaan. What your ancient forefathers were, you are today without doubt or contradiction. There is no one who is able to change man from the descendant nature of his forefathers unless his power extends beyond the great universal creator Allah himself. There is no one. No one is able to change man from their descendant nature, Moors. You can play Negro Black Colored African games if you want to. But even under those labels, your jurisdiction is America. That's also your jurisdiction for you to claim. No would you want to tell you that? Right? But Negro Black Colors aren't going to claim this jurisdiction. They're going to, you know, all 80 million or whatever of them that say back to Africa are going to leave here their homeland and go across the great Atlantis to go to Africa and then over there is going to be empty because everybody's coming over here why because this is the hub North America is the hub of the Moroccan Empire still today why because people are coming here why are people coming here if there isn't something here for them to come get. What are they coming here for? Living here. Toronto is the most multicultural city in the world. In the world. Right? Again, going back to Nobel Juali again, because he laid out everything. Right? He told you, Moors, it is most earnestly hoped that the Marsh Science Temple of America will not in any way be confused with any Back to Africa movement. It is earnestly hoped. It is most earnestly hoped that the Moorish Science Temple of America will not in any way be confused with any Back to Africa movement. Why? Because you're in Africa already. And there's no need to go back to Africa if you're already in Africa. Because the inhabitation or the jurisdiction of Africa extends from over there across the great Atlantis to here right and again all this is the Mukha Ravine files this is not information that you're not supposed to have access to this is information that you're supposed to have and if you don't have it you need to question these people who claim to be the heads right now, how, how is this possible? Now, think about this, Mars. How is this possible, right? December 15th, 1987. Okay, December 15th, 1987. Oh. United States Patent and Trademark Office. Service Mark Principal Register. So, this was trademarked in 1987. Now, how is this going to be trademarked in 1987 when Nobu used this in the 1920s? Right? Just putting stuff out there, Mars. Right? How is this going to be trademarked? How is this going to be trademarked? How can somebody trademark the crescent and star of Islam? How could somebody trademark that? Right? 
and they think about how deep the conspiracy goes because somebody's gonna allow them to trademark it, right? The master seal, right? The Circle Seven logos is trademarked in 1987. Morris, there's a big sellout in this movement, and we are for unity, but we're not going to be uniting with Morris who, like E. Media said, aren't putting the prophet up front. They want to put themselves up front. They want to put David Wynn Miller up front. They want to put pseudo-European sovereigns up front. They want to put Elijah Poole Bay up front, Kirkman Bay up front. They want to put all these people up front that shouldn't be up front. Like, why, why are you up front? Right? Now, let's go again. Um, extremist Muslim groups and violence. More Science Temple of America. I didn't even read this page before. Extremist Muslim groups and violence. More Science Temple of America. This document contains neither recommendations nor conclusions of the FBI. It is the property of the FBI and is loaned to your agency. It and its contents are not to be distributed outside your agency. And this is um, March 22nd, 1933, I think it says. The Marsh Science Temple of America, oh sorry, the Marsh Science, Temp the Marsh Science Temple of Islam was founded in 1913 in Newark, New Jersey by Noble Jurali who was born in North Carolina in 1886. Ali is Allah's prophet. Found followers of the MSTA believe they are Moorish Americans because they are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. The purpose of the MSTA is to uplift fallen humanity. Uh, uplift fallen humanity. The religion of the MSTA is Islamism. The MSTA flag is a red is red with a five-point green star in the center. Followers of the MSTA Incorporated believe in reincarnation. They believe that Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, etc. were all prophets of Allah and that Noble Juali was the last prophet. Juali passed in Chicago July 20th, 1929. Eighteen days later, Ali was reincarnated into a member by the name of John Gibbon L. who passed in Chicago in 1935. Now, let's deal with this again. There's no such thing as reincarnated. The term reincarnated doesn't exist. Right? It's incarnate. So either you incarnate or you don't. Right? But point of the matter is that there's... Now if this is the FBI files, right? If this is the FBI files, the information that they have is from people on the inside. Right? Knowing that this is going to be on the public record and people are going to be going for this, right? You still have to be mindful of the FBI files. Because the people that they got the information from for the FBI files were the same infiltrators that killed Nobu Juali. So you have to put the pieces together. So let's put some pieces together right now. Right? So now it's saying. Followers of the MSTA, okay, first of all, the Morris Science Temple of Islam, MSTA, in, in brackets, was founded in 1913 in New York, New Jersey, right? Okay, now, the Old Canaanite Temple was founded in New York, New Jersey in 1913. And the reason why the, the Old Canaanite Temple changed from Old Canaanite Temple to Moorish Temple of Science before Moorish Science Temple of America is because Moors tried to kill Noble Juali in New York, New Jersey. And Prophet Noble Juali was pretty much running for his life out of New York, New Jersey, which is why he went to Mecca because, you know, by the powers of Allah, he went to the pilgrimage grounds where he know those guys can't really you know chase him onto right embassy consulate 
right? State jurisdiction. Now, followers of the MSTA believe they are Moorish Americans because they are descendants of Moroccans born in America. Right on. Right? Because that's in the 101 questionnaire. The purpose of the MSTA is to uplift fallen humanity. Bam! Right on. Because that's in the questionnaire. The religion of the MSTA is Islamism. Right on. Because that's in the questionnaire. The MSTA flag is a is red with a five point green star in the center. You gotta stop there. Because you know it's not a MSTA flag. Right? It's a national flag. Okay? Now all everything before is saying MSTA. 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 One, two, three. Right? Three parts or four and at the top at the caption. Right? So you can see like it just says MSTA, right? All in here. It says MSTA, 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 right? But then when you get down to the next paragraph now, it's talking about followers of the MSTA Inc. Believe in reincarnation. And then when you check who the reincarnated prophets are, majority of those temples are ink. So that should put something in your mind as far as when you see the phrase or the term Moore Science Temple of America. If you see any attachments onto that, inks and whatever else, be weary. Right? Because they believe in reincarnation. And and reincarnation is a fraud. You can incarnate, but there's no such thing as reincarnation. Just like there's no such thing as representing. You could present, but you can't represent. Represent is fraud. Like point blank. Right? Mojuali passed in Chicago on july twentieth, nineteen twenty nine. 18 days later, Ali was reincarnated into a member by the name of John Gibbon Hill who passed in Chicago in 1935. Articles of the Divine Constitution and Bylaws of MSTA, right, so, so they don't say Articles of Divine Constitution and Bylaws MSTA Inc., right, like it's clear. Articles of the Divine Constitution and Bylaws of MSTA provides this organization of the MSTA is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government but to obey hereby this is read at every meeting and the followers are to abide hereby how many followers abided by that right not causing confusion calling yourself reincarnated prophets saying that they fell and woke up and crescent and stars in their eye so that meant that Nobujuali came into them like Negro black colored people believe anything. Right? Now it goes back again to this ink thing now. MSTA Inc. about three months ago started publishing a paper titled The Moorish Crescent. It is published twice a month by members in Williamstown, New Jersey. The MSTA Inc. has had no problems with the followers of Elijah Muhammad. There is a split off of MSTA Inc going by the name of MSTA at 957 East 75th Street, Chicago. This group does not accept the fact that Nobu Juali was reincarnated into John Given Ill. The MSTA Inc. and the MSTA cooperate with each other. The MSTA is not known to permit followers to carry weapons and teaches followers to obey the laws of the land. The leader is Foreman Bay. There is another small group operating under the name MSTA in the 1200 block on North Orleans, Chicago. This group split off from MSTA Inc. again because it did not accept the reincarnation of Mohudra Ali. This so there was a lot more Moors that had common sense back then, right? To know when the fraud was going on, right? This group, this group follows the basic precepts and laws of MSTA Inc. They are not known to allow members to carry weapons follow and follow the laws of the land a review of 
The Haynes 1972 Chicago City Address Key Directory fails to reflect an MSTA in the 1200 block of North Orleans, Chicago. Right, and again, it just goes on and on and on about information in the Moorish movement. And again, it's good because, you know, there's, there's things like, um, there's letters from people in here. There's letters from FBI to people. There's FBI files in here. There's um, U.S. Department of Justice letters to different sheiks and Department of National Affairs sending stuff to Moors. Um, you know, there, there's pictures of, of banquets and so it's a good it's a good study study reference in order to um, in order to have a clear perspective right as to why there's this why it it, it, it looks this way from the outside that there's all this confusion in the Moorish movement and you know how come Moors can't just get together and do what they're supposed to do and Moors are supposed to do this from how long ago how come they don't have stuff together right it has nothing to do with Moors not being active or not doing what they're supposed to do or you know um, running or uh, running running to to try to take this information and you know, keep it to themselves and not do anything and, uh, you know, it di directly, the confusion is related to the great sell-up. The confusion is related to why Moors don't have the information, right? It's like when, when I was studying a lot of Malachi York L's information, right? Came on, bumped into this brother on MySpace, right, Nuapian, and, you know, we were just building, and he's telling me, now, this is the time about with, with the trial and all that stuff going on, he's telling me that there's Nuapians that is taking, um, you know, certain, certain books that Doc put out, certain, certain books that he put out, they're taking these books and pretty much burying them, you know? And he didn't really understand why he didn't understand what was going on. You know, he was he was somebody that, you know, was, was on the land, you know what I mean? He had a store in Atlanta. He, he had a Nuapian store. He was selling, you know, other store products and all that stuff, like very, very successful, you know what I mean? Um, and I approached him because I found out that that Malachi York L had put out a, a Circle 7, Circle 7 Quran. So, you know, asking around, you know, and, and it's similar to, to the situation with the Moors. Like when I ask around about Moors, you know, and, you know, everybody's pointing me in the direction of some temple and diverting me away from Taj. You know, this went on for maybe like a year and a half, right? No, like who doesn't matter who I go to, everybody. Oh yeah, that guy's a renegade. You know, look, look at this, look at this article. You know, and then they would show me the, they would show me the articles that were written when Nature, El Bay sued Asbury Park, and because they didn't understand jurisprudence, they were basically saying that look how the courts are making a mockery of them when they didn't really understand that the power of the suit that nature filed is what made them have to slander which made them have to be in, be in complicity with and in conspiracy with the um, newspapers right you know what I'm saying so I'm talking to the brother and the brother is basically breaking down to me that yo like you know maybe a month ago there was about you know I knew at least say 
five people with stores and everybody had at least ten holy Qurans. It's a green book, hardcover, with red writing, right, and there's a Moroccan flag on the front. Right? This was a this was a book put out by Malachi York L. Like he put this book out. He put out the Circle Seven. Right? This wasn't you know, he chose to put this out. Right? And the boys tell me, well, yeah, you know, I only have, from uh, from what I understand, there's only two left, and I have them. He said that FBI was going around and straight confiscating people's stuff, property, books, literature, right? Not only was FBI and CIA and whoever confiscating stuff, there was Nuwapians giving up stuff. There was Nuwapians, right? And I and I wish I remember the brother's name. I have to go back in the MySpace and probably go back to see if those messages are still in there, right? The brother was breaking down to me about the big sellout amongst the Nuwapian Moors, the ones who abandoned Noble Juali and started pushing Dr. York as you know the prophet basically right and putting Noble Juali on the back burner even though the holy tablets has the circle seven in it and pictures of Noble Juali and all that right so you know we realize that once once the sellout happened in the Marsh Science Temple it was able to trickle into all these organizations because once once they got Noble Juali out of the way all these agents all these provocateurs now all they have to do is take off their fez put back on their little suit or put back on their little slave clothes and blend back into society and nobody's even nobody's even gonna know that they were even members of the temple right nobody's gonna even know that they had affiliations with the temple but you're gonna see that you know people go into these organizations and they rise to power right just like brother Hannibal saying they don't infiltrators and and these people don't go into organizations in order to be on the bottom in order to be among the membership they're infiltrated in order to sit amongst the council of, of the sages right so when you when you look at at um, when you look at you know for example with the Nuwapians when you look at Dr. The, Dr. York right and then he had a paper called Nuwapian Moors newspaper and then he gets locked up and then all of a sudden everything's called Tamari Times and nothing's called Nuwapian Moors anymore and then if you do your research, you'll find out that there are a group of Nuwapians that still call themselves Moors. They got nationality cards and they they follow the, sh the protocol that Nobujuali laid down. As Nuwapians, there's Nation of Gods and Earths with nationality cards, right? That they are down with Nobujuali and what he brought. They don't play the Clarence 13X and, you know what I mean? They don't go there. They deal with the law. They deal with nationality and birthrights. Because on their lesson books, you know, that's the circle seven. The, the star with the seven in the middle is circle seven. Right? So when you're doing your research about Noble Juali and the Moorish movement, it's important for you to have this book called the Mukarabin Files. Right? On top of that, it's important for you to have the 101 questionnaire. It's important for you to have the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. It's important for you to have the Divine Constitution and Bylaws so you can have a greater respect for what Nobu Juali brought you. Because Nobu Juali again came and told the Moors that were labeled Negro Black Colored that your jurisdiction and your inhabitation extends from Africa onto the present 
Moroccan Empire. Right? So, your jurisdiction, your home, your domicile, the place where you reside most of the time, permanently, isn't that here? Aren't all you people called Negro Black Colored got a house or apartment here? Isn't this where you reside? Isn't this where you domicile? Isn't this where you do your business and where you live? The Moroccan Empire. You're in your land. This is Africa as well. As over there is Africa. This is also Africa. Right? So you are home here. Yeah, you can go back there too, but that doesn't mean that you can't claim here. Why can't you claim here and claim over there? And claim Australia and claim Asia and everywhere else? Right? It's, it's very simple. It's extremely simple. And Noble Drawley's literature tells you that this is for Moorish children. But it's adults reading it. But it's called for Moorish children. Quran questions for Moorish children. Right? Because that's how basic it is for anybody to get. If you would only think, if you would only use the faculties that God gave you, right? To free yourself. And remember, yes, you can free yourself with Noble Drawley's information. You can, right? But the reason why there's confusion in the Moorish movement is because unconscious, sincere Moors look at the temple as stained or soiled when if you see something's dirty you clean it you don't turn your back on it you don't see dishes in the sink and not do them you do them right the temple being stained is dirty dishes in the sink but in order for you to have access to the soap and the sponge to get to work you have to be a member so if you have race pride and if you love your race don't be afraid of these dirty morals don't be afraid of sellouts and Quintel Pro and FBI papers and you know Morris killed the prophet don't don't worry about that stuff right become a member it's real simple you go in and you proclaim your nationality and if you go in there and you can't proclaim your nationality or somebody's trying to tell you eight million dollars in order for you to come proclaim your nationality then you don't deserve to be there and maybe you should do it on your own but still try to seek out a temple because eventually you're going to bump into a temple that is clean and pure and there's going to be some good mores there and take my word for it when you bump into good mores true mores that love the prophet and love their people you are going to have one of the most amazing experiences that you ever had in your life just by being a member of the more science temple of america i'm not talking out of bias i'm talking out of this is what your salvation is all those other things that you thought were your salvation has been a fraud nothing has worked to date nothing no organization that has come for the redemption of Negro, Black, Colored, African people has worked. All of them have failed. Right? Why have they failed? Look at our condition. Our condition is no better than it was when we were in slavery. We're still eating pig feet, ox tail, you know. We're still doing slave church rituals, right? We still have a language that's not our own we still wear things that not our own right and on top of that we're mental slaves on top of all that the cure for that trust me is what noble drawley brought you right and you don't have to trust me go out there research find out for yourself you know what i mean and i guarantee you that 
a light's gonna go off when you start studying what Noble Drawley brought you. And when that light goes off, just go on Facebook, go on MySpace, go on Twitter and ask Moors, yo, tell me about this light bulb that goes off. And every Moor is gonna have a story for you, an immaculate story, right? That you just hearing that story is gonna change your life. Islam Moors, it's nine o'clock right now. Stay tuned because we're going live 9.30 on Civil Alert with the family, right? So check the links, Civil Alert Radio, Blog Talk, 9.30. If you got questions, call in. If you are Cayman Land Moors and you're watching this right now, check the link, Civil Alert World Civil Alert Radio Blog Talk We're going to be live at 9.30 Feel absolutely free To call in And you know what I mean Let us know something Alright I want to say Islam to the Moors We love y'all And just continue to study And continue to grow And continue to show love for one another Because we have a job to be active Not passive Right, so we're off the visual, but we're gonna catch you on the audio at 9:30. Islam.